Bigfoot Collectors Club presents Terrifying Tales from Zombie Bigfoot's Cryptid Crypt! <laughs> I know a ghost story about you! Hey everybody, welcome to Bigfoot Collectors Club, the show where we talk to amazing guests about their personal paranormal history and share stories of high strangeness. I'm your host, Michael McMillan. With me always is your other host, Bryce Johnson. Woo! And our ultra terrestrial producer, Riley Bray. Took me a minute to remember what we call you now. <laughs> Works. There it is. <laughs> we get there. There you are. And if you're watching or listening, either way, you've heard this lovely laugh with us. Uh, we have an amazing guest with us this week. Bryce, why don't you bring them in? Yeah, let's do it. It's my honor to introduce this week's guest. She's a singer, actress, model. You've probably seen her somewhere like The Irishman, 30 Rock, Blue Bloods, Nurse Jackie, my super ex-girlfriend, and of course, Sun Records, where she played Marion Keisker, basically the secretary who discovered Elvis. But where you'll really want to see Margaret Ann, and yes, she prefers Margaret Ann, is in the theaters right now, getting God only knows what happened to her in Damien Leone's highly anticipated smash hit, Terrifier 3, hitting theaters this October 11th. Please oh, welcome to the show, Margaret Ann Florence. Woo! Oh, wow. Hi, Margaret. Hi. That was the best introduction I've ever had. Yeah, that was, oh, well, so that's much. what we do here on the Bigfoot Collectors Club. Welcome <laughs> oh, to the show. I so Welcome. Fancy. Thank you. I also Thank love that you call it a smash hit before it's even in theaters. He knows. <laughs> they know. Manifest. Look, when you're sitting on a winner, you know. That's right. Yes. That's right. Uh, it was actually in Fantastic Fest, and I was I can't I can't even get tickets to the screening here in L.A. It like sold out in a few minutes. So I don't know. Good. Good now, gracious. Now, for people listening at home, Terrifier is part of the Art the Clown horror movie saga is is like quickly becoming a major i would say already has arrived as a major iconic movie monster now true or false margaret ann yeah you are working in this film with none other than bryce johnson that is very true it was my my lucky day that i got partnered up with bryce in the film now i have a question yeah. When you guys were taking a break and you're over at the craft service table and you're getting a cup of coffee or some tea, mm-hmm. how much, how, how soon did he bring up Bigfoot? <laughs> it was, it was pretty soon. That was, a, I was just saying, we were pretty much talking about Bigfoot. Uh. But, That's great. but which I found so fascinating because I really I don't know anybody with intimate Bigfoot experience. So yeah. that was a very cool thing to hear about. It's I such an it. icebreaker. You know, I'm pulling that uh, that Bigfoot card out every time. You know? When you have well, something time. like that to talk about. <laughs> I mean, not everybody has that as a conversation starter. So <laughs> I think so it's, I think it's awesome. But I love it. I love it. <laughs> now, it's October, I believe, 2nd as this episode drops. Wow. The movie is love coming this. out on October 11th. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us like who you play? Can you tell us like who your characters are, both of you? I think so. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, it's out there on yeah, IMDb. I, we play. Uh, oh, go ahead. No, you. I'm good. I'm. I'm play Jessica, Aunt Jess, and I'm the, um, the aunt of the. <laughs> I'm the, yeah. I'm the mom figure and the, uh, the mother, Bryce's wife. Yeah, and, and then I'm Uncle um, Greg. I'm 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 fun Uncle Greg who likes to eat. <laughs> I try to eat. He does. I wanted. I wanted to eat in you, every scene. I wanted yeah, to like uh, up my eating I acting. It. I was like, I, I even nice. told Margaret Ann, I was like, you know, I really respect James Gandolfini and Brad Pitt. They're always eating in the scenes. I'm really going to try and eat in in every scene. So uh, this that's became what I a for. topic <laughs> of discussion that. with the three of us over uh-huh. on the other side when we watched Wolfen, and Albert Finney is just like in a phone booth, just putting down a submarine sandwich like harder oh than God. any actor you've ever seen. Yeah, uh, if you ever Marvel. have to just shovel exposition, just start eating a, a dog, you know what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> wow, that is fascinating. <laughs> Wait, yeah, a hot good. dog, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, or, of course. Know, so, Terrifier yeah. 3, man. You don't or Terrifier yeah. 3, maybe a regular dog. I don't know. Jeez. <laughs> not, not maybe you're you don't know. Spoiler alert. You never know. You never know. Okay, well, we're going to get into it, uh, Margaret Ann. But before we do that, let's swing over to 
Riley and nominate our five star club scout of the week. This is a listener of the show who's left us a five star review on Apple Podcasts, mm, which mm. helps us get the show to more ears. It sure does. And this one's from Mugnam One. And <laughs> uh, the subject is down to earth, so to speak. This show is amazing. Unlike most paranormal podcasts, they don't scream into your ears about <laughs> conspiracy theories and act like they are knowers of all. They keep the stories simple and easy to listen to while also making it fun. Perfect for all types interested in getting into the supernatural five stars. Oh, oh I love that. I, mean, Woo. I love it. I, yeah, we I do scream. Some, there's some screaming. <laughs> there's some screaming, and we do act like we know it all, but we definitely don't. Especially we'll me. That. I'm so guilty of that. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, you're just expand, you're exploring new ideas, you're, Bryce. You're excited. You're passionate. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do get excited. Yeah. You're painting with all the colors of the wind over here. Exactly. <laughs> okay, Margaret Ann, it's yes. time to get down to it. Now, I forgot to mention at the top oh. of the show, it's October <laughs> That means it's Zombie Bigfoot's Cryptid Crypt Month. All month mm. long, here Ooh. on the podcast and over on the other side, we're going to be sharing extra terrifying tales of high strangeness. So what you don't have to have a scary story yourself. I'm going to take care of that later in the episode. But we must ask you, especially yeah. during the spooky season, what is your personal paranormal history? Have you ever experienced anything you can't explain? Do you have thoughts floating around in your head like ghosts? What do you think about the paranormal? UFOs, altered UFOs states of consciousness. Wow. UFOs, I know. Well, I I do feel like uh, there's got to be more out there, right? There's 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 so much out there. I would say my personal experience comes through more like I would say in a, a ghost realm, like family Ooh. members that have passed, uh, things, signs, you know, coming in that sort of fashion more than like a scary, luckily I haven't had a, <laughs> a terrifying true life experience. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely just some, you know, uh, strange feelings, coincidences, things happening. I have, um, I did once see um, a, a shaman who uh, told me some some interesting things that really there was no way that this woman could have known. Okay. So okay. yeah, Let's unpack. Ah, it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I love. I love. How did you meet the shaman? And well, what did they reveal? I was on a, a fancy girls weekend for a birthday That's party. How it all starts. Yeah, start. yeah. like Until that. one and crazy shaman <laughs> teaches them beautiful. how to dance. I know. I know. We were in Mexico. And, um, but, you know, some of the other girls through the weekend had gone to the shaman. And I wasn't going to go, not for any bad reason. I was just didn't opt to do it. And then finally, like, they were getting such interesting, like, you know, it's readings coming back. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to go see the shaman. So, um, and it was, it was really like sort of a spiritual experience. I mean, it was this, wow. you know, little tiny woman and she had this feather that she, you know, sensed you with and all this stuff. It, it was very cool. Mm -hmm. I, I, I will say it was like an awesome experience, but one of the more interesting things that she told me was that, um, which she could not have known because I came, I was just dressed in like a t-shirt and shorts and um, she took the feather and she made this like circle, like on my stomach around here. And she said, um, she said, there's, there's a lot of um, bad negative feeling right here, something mm. bad. And I was like, and I said, well, I said, I have, a, I had and was born with a huge, like, birthmark for wine stain on my stomach, like red, like blood red. Whoa. For my whole was, life. And I was born with a giant birthmark on my stomach, too. Well, at, is yours disappearing? Because mine is. No, I had to have it removed when I was in fourth grade because they were worried it might cause skin cancer. Oh, my gosh. Well, really nobody ever that. told me that. I did go to somebody as a child, though, to see about just removing it just for, like, a mine cosmetic was, purposes. Mine was, like, very – it was maybe a little different. It was, like, brown and pretty fuzzy. So I think it had to go. 
Wow. Well, mine was is like blood red, like you can see like blood vessels on the top. Whoa. But it has almost completely disappeared. Like it's basically completely gone. And but the shaman told me she said that that was things from the past that were not mine that but oh they were gosh. leaving me. What? And Whoa. that Wow. Yeah, she did tell me that. She wow. did. And I was like and she hadn't like seen me. I mean, you couldn't like see through my shirt or anything, but um, but yeah, but she like directly pointed to where that was and was like, but it's not yours. Like she, com- she told me like, it's not for me to wow. worry about, but that it's going away. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I've in, heard. In the... Yeah. Go incredible. ahead, Bryce. I was going to say in the, you know, in the reincarnation literature, especially by guys like Dr. Ian Stevenson, uh, they lay out pretty clearly that stuff like birthmarks, uh, scoop marks, indentations are, are signs from the last life. And they are markers of perhaps a traumatic event, uh, the ending of their, you know, they, they, they represent things from a past life. I think that is so fascinating. And how could she know that, by the way, shamanism is the oldest, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, religion on planet Earth. If you even want to call it a religion, it's more than that. But um, spiritual, you know, practice uh, yeah, yeah. Mixed with to, medicine. To, to say that something like that would go away and that the fact that it sort of has. Are you kind of blown away by that? I am because it's also like medically like no dermatologist I've seen has been like this should go away. Like it's not something that normally goes away on people. And I haven't, people are like, well, have you done a laser to it? Or have you done? I'm like, no, nothing. Wow. And I thought like it would get worse, but I I don't know. It didn't. I mean, it's literally almost completely gone. And it was like wild. Like that. that Wild. Since this I was the born first on this so. show, I love it. And I you were worried you didn't have yeah. a crazy story. I know, for us? seriously. I'm I well, the there you go. This is how it happens every go. time. I'm blown away by yeah, that. I, I love that we could be 300 plus so episodes into this series and we're like, we someone's birthmark is disappearing. Past life trauma yeah. birthmark. Yeah. 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 So totally. Have you did ever you had hints that? or, oh, go ahead, Riley. Well, just, did you feel that you sort of released something else along with this birthmark dissolve? Because the shaman, she was saying that it's it was the, someone else's sort of past trauma or whatever. Or did, do you have yeah, a sense just, of that? Not, I mean, not really, like, not really. But just mm. just to acknowledge that it's like maybe something that didn't have to do with me, but it's also leaving me. I don't know. It, it was. It's just a very strange, like, wow. idea for somebody to even present. But... Yeah. So when I came back and told my friends that, they were like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're like, that's amazing. But <sighs> yeah, because even if I'll see people that I haven't seen in like years, like at the beach or something, they'll be like, oh my God, like you don't have that brain talk anymore. And I'm like, Man. no, I don't. I was like, well, I can't. Let me tell it. you. I don't know what I'm The shaman doing. told me, the shaman <laughs> sucked it right out. No, I was that's pulling great. out. That's great. I don't know. It's bizarre. Love but that. she also told me, like, she was like, I can, she's like, I know that you're very creative and in the arts and you should keep doing that. Whatever you're doing, don't stop doing that. Mm. She told me that too. Mm. Cool. Here. Nothing yeah. but good news from the shaman. She, yeah, the like, shaman was shaman. was spot on. That shaman, yeah. if you need one, she's the best one. You know, um, there's yeah. a that was, sort that was of- pretty crazy though. There's also like medical mediums out there that do some pretty incredible readings and stuff. I mean, this type of phenomenon is absolutely fascinating. I've always been really curious about these like ornate uh, spiritual healings that happen on a medical level all over the globe, you know, like people are taking out tumors without tools and uh, all types of crazy stuff. It's very strange. <laughs> Riley, Riley's shaking his head. To this? You, know, you know, mental tumors, they're right? not. You know, shadow they're tumors. They're not. Yeah. They're not doing that. That's <laughs> right, right. They're not. Yeah. Well, I'll have to bring in a case. I was with you. I I'll have to bring you, in a case of high strangeness. But uh, there is go some strange stuff on psychic if you, surgery. If you got yeah. a tumor, go see psychic a doctor. Surgery, Just go, yeah. see, go to the doctor. Yeah. Well, at least get a second opinion. Well, now, of course. Margaret Ann, I have to yeah. go back to something <laughs> that you mentioned at the top of this conversation, which is that you felt like you've had experience with. Uh, loved ones that have passed yeah. away. Can you explain yeah. any of those moments? Certainly. Well, I have just like, I don't know, little small coincidences here and there, some built around. And it's not like what well, my father passed away um, like 11 years ago now. I'm sorry. And um, thank you. But he was just a wonderful person. But there's moments where I like, I feel like I see him. It's not like I see 
physically see him, but I had, you know, and one, one was when I was about to give birth to my first child. And I was literally like, like the, the delivery was going a little wacky. He wasn't turned the right way. And I, it was like, they had to slow things down, but I was like, literally like shaking, holding the nurse's hands. And I just remember like looking up and just like feeling the presence of my dad, like just knowing that he was there with me. And I actually like kind of laughed out loud, like just because it was like a comfort it, just uh. to like, I was like, oh, he's there. So, wow. you know, things like that. And also coincidentally, this similar thing was the the day before I had my son, I saw my doctor and she was like, well, I'm going to be on call this weekend. And, you know, if, if you have the baby, the, the, I, the, I was due on a Tuesday. I saw her on a Monday. She was like, I'll be on call this weekend. Like maybe you'll, you know, have the baby sometime, whatever. And, and she says, but I'll be there. You know, I'm there tomorrow and blah, blah, blah. And I said, I am naming this baby after my father and he was always on time. So I will see you tomorrow. And sure enough, <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> wow, I was wondering so if I, I was going to ask if you named the kid after your, your, your yeah, child, my, after my, your dad. Yeah. Yes. My first uh, son is named after my dad. So, but yeah, wow. but I was like, no, my dad was never late. I'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, so it sounds so, like, bro. Yeah. Go ahead, Bryce. I was just going to say, so it sounds like you're open to this sort of phenomenon of uh, something past yes. the, uh, you know, uh, oh, yes. the life. Yeah, that's cool. Of course. And I have my mom is very, I feel like very in tune with all that. She has a lot of dreams and she'll, you know, wake up and tell me about things that she's dreamt about. She is very spiritual in that way and connected to things in that way. I would say even more so than than I am. But yes, I'm totally open to really just the idea that energy is always with you and moving and people and lives and you're all got to be connected in some way. So I think, Love that. you know, well people that pass are always looking out for you and they're always with you in some way. So mm -hmm. that's sort so, of. So was your mom into the idea that like ghosts or spirits hang around or was she more into that like energy transference that like when the body dies, the soul or our energy continues on in some form? Well, I think both. I think both. But she she feels like, well, we live on a um my when I grew up, my my mother's house is on an old this um Eliza Lucas plantation. She was the Whoa. woman that made indigo, um the indigo plant and dye and everything. And um oh my gosh. she was sort of a revolutionary woman in her time. But our house growing up is on part of her land that was that um plantation. So uh, she, my mom always feels like there's like some sort of, you know, spirits wandering around. I mean, mm -hmm. if you think about all the people that lived on that land before you and all the lives that were there. And, um, so she's kind of always like felt that in the, in our house and everything, yeah. good things, not nothing, you know, to be afraid of, but again, just, I don't know, you have to respect all the people that have come before you and all the when you think about just standing in one spot, how many people have also stood there and been there and lived yeah. there? Yeah. Did you ever so. get a sense growing up? Did you ever hear bumps in the night or anything that you're like, wait a minute? Mm -hmm. Well, my mom says she'll have like fans turn on and, you know, lights, things happen, that, you know, when nobody's there. I mean, especially she lives there by herself now. So it's just her. So mm -hmm. <laughs> if something's going on, then uh, <laughs> there's nobody to blame. But yeah, but she, <laughs> she will say she notices, uh, she notices those kind of things sometimes, but um, I don't know if I have anything specific. I can't remember. Yeah. Wow. I mean, someone who speaking as someone who thinks that they grew up in a haunted house, I know that feeling. And sometimes those things just feel like normal everyday house sounds <laughs> and can be, but then sometimes you hear a door open and close and footsteps and a shadow on the wall. And you're like, nobody's there. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> What's your, so, so, Coming into Terrifier Three, I'm interested. What scares you? This is the Halloween season. What 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 oh what freaks you out about the paranormal the most? What you know? Because it sounds like you're pretty. You've had good experiences. What would? No, well, I not on what what I'm not a you? bad one. Well, I I mean Halloween is my favorite holiday, but I think that's more from the like dressing up 
actor fun side of Halloween, not the scary, I don't want to be scared to death side of Halloween. Right. Um, but uh, I, I, I sometimes I don't love being in like the total darkness. Okay. And just when your mind can start to like roll on you. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just, <laughs> I, I, am, I don't know. I don't want to yeah. be, um, Alone. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, total. Yes, that's yes. I still dark have sometimes. nightmares about being in the dark or having to cross a room that's pitch black. Well, like a to get threshold, to the other side yes. Of yeah, I don't like it either. I'm I'm yeah. with you, Margaret Ann, 100%. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, no, thank you. Okay, I, let's take a quick no. break. When we come back, we're going to play a game with Margaret Ann. Oh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Also scared of games. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Margaret Ann, I didn't mean to scare you before the break. Okay. This is going to be fun. It's a fun, a fun game. game. It's a fun game. Oh. <laughs> a fun play a little game. game. Okay. okay. Yeah, let's let's play what game. scares you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go down a list of phenomena. Rapid fire. And you've got to choose right now. If you're open to it, you're going to say, believe it. If you're not open to it, you're going to say, bullshit. There's no in between. You got to make a choice now. Okay. This is a game that we call bullshit. Or believe it. Or believe it. <laughs> That's right. You stole Bryce's line, and I appreciate First that. First time. I was hoping yeah, that was Bryce to the punch. Nice. Nice. How do you explain well it? done. First guess, the, maybe we don't play the game if the guest guesses correctly. You, the you won. The game. That was the secret they get a unlocked. secret pass out. <laughs> Other secret game within the game. Yeah. Now, of course, this will be the zombie Bigfoot edition of the list. This is a special oh. list that I compiled for oh, Spooky great. Season. So, Margaret Ann, here we go. Yeah. On well, your I mark. I'm going to offend Bryce if I don't believe it. Okay. It's okay. No, it's okay. Right. Hey, hey, it's a safe it's, space. And we can circle yeah. back to any of these if you want to unpack them a little bit more. Okay. On your mark. You will not offend me. Get set. Ghosts. Believe it. Bigfoot. Bullshit. Aliens. Believe it. Demonic possession. Don't want it. <laughs> Some believe it. <laughs> Ouija boards. Um, uh, believe it. Werewolves. Bullshit. Witches. Believe it. Vampires. I have bullshit. Black cats are bad luck. Bullshit. Levitation. Believe it. Graveyards are haunted. Believe it. Fortune telling. Oh, believe it. The mummy's curse. Bullshit. <laughs> Zombies. Bullshit. <laughs> Killing spiders when you find them in your house. Oh, bullshit. Scientists have created genetic monstrosities. Oh, believe it. Speaking to the dead. Believe it. Full moons create lunacy. Oh, uh, believe it. The owls are not what they seem. No, bullshit. <laughs> Curses. Bullshit. Tricks. Believe it. Treats. Believe it. There you go. Well hey, done. Hey, oh, my God. Uh, hey, I couldn't great. think of one. <laughs> For spiders. So yeah, I, yeah, no, that's great. Have, we don't kill those spiders. Kind of expand no, it yeah. on. No, put them outside. Yeah. You put them outside. Spiders Although I, you, you I recently great. heard that. I recently heard that when you put spiders outside, they're most likely to die. So now I just try to find a corner of the house where they. Yeah, won't no, bother. right. Well, yeah. Oh. Well, hey, it's off your plate. You know what I mean? You're like, yeah. hey, good luck. Yeah, you're on like, your yeah, own. Um, not my problem anymore. Okay, Margaret Ann, I know one yeah. that caught all of our attention, especially Bryce's levitation. Levitation. Woo. What do you think about levitation? I don't know. Well, again, I think maybe that's energy. Like, okay. if you, I, I mean, I've never seen it, but, <laughs> but yeah. I think if you had, uh, I don't know, the right amount of energy somewhere, it could be possible. I love I it. Know. Yeah. 
What kind of monstrosities do you think scientists have created? Now, I'm thinking monsters, but I guess this could be a number of things. Well, I'm just thinking there's there's things in labs that we don't know about, that people are mashing together yes. species mm. and things that they're not. They're putting ears on the back of mice, yeah. and, exactly. right? Oh, yeah. Those yep. things they are happening. Are definitely doing that. Um, yeah. Are you a cat person? Do you have any cats? We did have a couple cats growing up. I wouldn't say I was a... Well, I'm not a cat or dog person. I, I like all animals, but not a lover of any. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> you're walking a fine line yeah, with a us great right answer. now. But, <laughs> yeah. but I like uh, them fine. Yeah, they're okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll tolerate them. Uh, Ouija boards. I can't remember if you said... Uh, I said, or, yeah. I, I mean, you know, I think I'm p- playing that as a kid and like, you know... Uh, I, 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 maybe again, if you have the right person moving the energy yeah. around, then mm-hmm. maybe you could get a, a clear message. But a bunch of eight year olds, very much like me, not. like a, a little weary of the demonic possession, a little weary of the Ouija board stuff. We're on the same page with all, yeah. No, no, I don't think anyone's really signing up for demonic possession. You'd be surprised. There's, there's, a, there's a few, that's there's, probably there's, true. There's a few. <laughs> Riley's like, I've played in a few bands. With that <laughs> A, uh, a top a, every cat. Is there a band name, Demonic Possession? That's a great band name. You know, there's a, there's a satanic doo-wop uh, band called Twin Temple yeah, that's Twin pretty Temple. funky. They're great. They're friends of mine. They're yeah, <laughs> That's awesome. They no are. way. Oh, they I rock, dude. Yeah. I do, too. Right. They're so yeah. cool. Uh, well, awesome. All right. You well, did great. We're going to take another break. When we come back, it's time for this week's terrifying tale from Zombie Bigfoot's mm. Cryptid Crypt. <laughs> All right, Margaret Ann, it's story time. You get to sit back, relax, and let us do all the talking. So, <laughs> and or feel free to Michael jump anyway. in with any. Yeah, feel free to jump in with any questions or thoughts as we go along. But we'll discuss at the end of this uh, tale. Bryce, get ready. You've got a couple roles to play in this. Yes. Art the clown. Pennywise. Killer clowns from outer space. Ronald McDonald. These clowns and many others have struck terror in the hearts of children all over the world since the 1980s. Stephen King's blockbuster novel, It, featuring a child-devouring, shape-shifting clown who hibernated in the sewers of Derry, Maine, was published in 1986 and went on to spawn a cult classic TV miniseries starring Tim Curry's Pennywise the Clown. And more recently, two major motion pictures featuring Bill Skarsgård filling out those big red shoes. But five years before Stephen King's novel forced audiences to rethink their relationships with red-nosed, cartwheeling, tiny car-driving morons, a strange phenomenon began in Boston and quickly spread across the nation, sending parents, teachers, and overwhelmed police departments into a panic. Mm. It's time for our first installment in this year's anthology of terrifying tales from Zombie Bigfoot's Cryptid Crypt. It's showtime. Time for The Phantom Clowns. Oh, wow. great. Okay. All right, dude. Okay. Bring in the clowns. Anybody heard Let's about go. Phantom Clowns? Uncharted and... territory. Oh, wow. Did you no, know that you time. were starring in a movie that's based on some, some truth? No, this is so cool. Michael, you used to call clowns another word that I loved. Uh, Shimmers or uh, uh, what did you call them? Uh, Well, Pennywise is a glimmer. Glimmer. Glamour, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. because he's a shape-shifting. He he becomes the thing that you're most afraid of. That's that's like an old kind of like fae, you know, type. I'm stoked for this. Okay, great. Well, phantom clown encounters involve the sudden and inexplicable appearance of clowns on the fringes of public places like schoolyards and parks. Many have written off phantom clowns as mass hysteria and perhaps a subset of good old fashioned satanic panic. 
and more recent sightings may provide terrestrial explanations, but whether the phenomenon is supernatural or man-made, a giant question mark lingers over the subject matter like a twisted balloon animal just waiting to pop. Ooh. According to cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman, who coined the term Phantom Clown in his book Mysterious America, Phantom Clowns are usually very specific. There's a clown often seen in a van, kids being approached and telling adults, and then the clowns never being caught. Riley, I told you this was going to be scary. Ew. Riley, Riley, we can't hear you. What happened? The Phantom Clown. <laughs> He's the so Phantom scared. He's muted himself. Voice. <laughs> I was going to say, a clown in a van is one of the scariest things I can think of. The two worst things. Because well, I, can... I just put them right together. Buckle up, because we got a lot of vans, and they're full of clowns. <laughs> oh, boy. It all began back on May 5th, 1981, when multiple reports flooded the departments of Boston area police of two figures dressed as clowns driving a black van that were spotted in the vicinity of Lawrence Elementary School in Brookline. The van, seen by children, was an older model with no hubcats and a broken headlight. On May 6, another black van, or possibly the same, was seen near Franklin Park along the horseshoe site. So people are just playing horseshoes, minding their own business, and some clowns show up. Uh, two clowns, one of whom was wearing nothing from the waist down, were lurking oh. near the horseshoe site. Clowns were also spotted near Mary F. Curley Elementary School in Jamaica Plains. Calls were made by terrified parents fearful of pantsless clowns luring their young into black vans with the promise of candy. Jeez. Boston police issued a citywide alert to schools urging teachers, parents, and children to be extra vigilant. Rumors and reports of strange clowns approaching children had actually begun a week earlier. An investigative counselor for the Boston School District named Daniel O'Connell sent out a memo regarding this strange occurrence. It read, It has been brought to the attention of the police department and the district office that adults dressed as clowns have been bothering children to and from school. Please advise all students that they must stay away from strangers, especially ones dressed as clowns. That's just good advice all around. In general, yeah. write that down, put it in your pocket, yeah, you take it with you your, your whole life. Strange is bad, strange is dressed as clowns, even worse. <laughs> very bad, very bad. Clowns with no pants? Yes. Even Double. triple worse. Yeah. Heart, uh, heart uh, pass. Uh, oh my God, don't even get me started, how bad? <laughs> By May 8th, more and more sightings of these phantom clowns came in. Police started pulling over vans that fit any description to the vehicle described by the ins this insane clown posse and even stopped and questioned multiple professional clowns that were on their way to oh parties. Oh, my God. Oh, they pulled over a guy who was uh, that. a clown. Wait, you think this is funny? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Are you laughing at me? <laughs> Um, yeah, there was a guy that was like delivering a clownogram who was pulled over by police. That is a depressing. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Day. But also, it made me wonder how many clowns are just out there driving just around. Working. The working just, clowns of America. Yeah, there are a yeah. lot apparently yeah. in 1981. But everyone they pulled over, they were all legit. None of them fit the description, and they couldn't figure out who these clowns were that were hanging out at these parks and these schools. So with no leads no credible evidence, and most of the sightings being reported by children between the ages of five and seven, the Boston police eventually brushed off the whole thing within a couple of weeks. Yeah, here's the thing. No adult civilian or police officer has ever seen a clown. We've had calls saying there was a clown at a certain intersection and happened to have a police car sitting there, and the officers saw nothing. No clown! When the officers get there, no one tells them anything. I don't know if someone's got a hoax going on or not, but it's really foolhardy. However, the clowns were just getting their act started. 50 miles away in Providence, Rhode Island, reports of children seeing strange clowns loitering near their school grounds grabbed the attention of concerned school counselors. And by the end of May, my own hometown of Kansas City, Kansas, 
and its neighboring twin city, Kansas City, Missouri, saw reports of a blade-wielding killer clown preying on children. Those sightings began in mid-May when kids from Kansas City, Kansas reported being chased by a sword-wielding clown on their way home from school. On May 22nd, a yellow van being driven by a mysterious clown was reported at uh, six Kansas City, Missouri area schools, prompting a large search in the metropolitan area by police. The first report came in at 8.30 in the morning when a mother spotted a yellow van stop at her two daughters' bus stop. The driver spoke to the girls and then quickly sped away. When the mother reached her startled reached her startled offspring, they told her that a clown carrying a knife told them to get into the van. By noon that day, dozens more reports involving a clown and a yellow van came in. Police scoured the city for the clown car but did not find the culprit. By the end of the day, the activity had died down. However, eyewitness accounts still came in, like this one from a young girl named Latanya Johnson, a student at Fairfax Elementary School. She told a reporter from the Kansas City Star about her clown encounter by her school. He was by the fence and ran down through the big yard when some of the kids ran over there. He ran toward a yellow van. He was dressed in a black shirt with a devil on the front. He had two candy canes down each side of his pants. The pants were black too, I think. I don't remember much about his face. So a clown with a devil on its shirt and candy canes on its pants. Yeah, it's like are the candy canes like guns, like two like six shooters, like an old cowboy? Oh uh, yeah. Like I think they're yeah. like running all the way down the legs, like track. Oh yeah, oh, that's yeah, stripes. right. Yeah, that's good. Reports of phantom clowns spread. They were spotted in Omaha, Nebraska, Denver, Colorado, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So all of these are happening simultaneously across the nation in May of 1981. In Pittsburgh, things got particularly weird. Eyewitness accounts told of clowns being accompanied by gorillas, large rabbits, and even, I hate to say this because he is my personal hero, Spider-Man. Oh. <laughs> it's not good when Spider-Man starts hanging out with clowns. A mysterious... Yeah, you choose your friends wisely, you know? A mysterious person in a large pink bunny costume was seen frolicking around a cemetery in Allegheny County, and a pink and white rabbit was reported driving a blue van around the neighboring town of Garfield. <laughs> Just what the hell was yeah. all of this clowning around? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> By the end of May, police in Pittsburgh in the Pittsburgh area were getting 15 reports a day of clowns accompanied by costume characters trying to abduct children. That's kind of unheard of. That's crazy. Yeah. And no one was arrested. And this thing that the cops don't see no one when was they found. get there, that's so weird. I don't like this at all. Yep. The phantom clown flap was eventually written off as mass hysteria. But as Lauren Coleman points out, there is a history of unusual phenomenon involving beings with painted white faces and clownish appearances. Indrid Cold, for example, also known as the Gritting Man, a UFO occupant who approached traveling salesman Woody Derenberger one fateful night in 1966, might fit into the category of a phantom clown. Mm -hmm. Then there's also the story about Sam the Sandown Clown, which we've talked about uh, here on yeah. the show. There's another a mysterious clown. Look at clown all these clowns. Ro yeah, clown slash robot chimera encountered by two children in England in the 1970s. Other historical figures like the Mad Gasser of Mattoon or spring Jack might also fit into the Phantom Clown category. These larger-than-life, colorful figures that are here in one minute, gone the second. In March 1981, just a few months before the clowns in van phenomenon began, an entity that was nicknamed the Mineral Point Vampire a white-faced, cloaked figure was reported lurking in the shallows of Graceland Cemetery in Mineral, Port, Mineral Point, Wisconsin. Now, this is a really interesting case where people would see this being that had a white painted face and dark clothing and they would call the cops and when the cops would get there they would chase it off and it would jump over walls or jump over four foot fences and disappear 
And then in 19, uh, oh, it wasn't 1991. It was in 2014, stories about the Mineral Point, Mineral Point Vampire came back where there would be police called and they would see footsteps or footprints lead, leading up to a wall. And then the footprints would, would vanish. Wow, super strange. Yeah, and the phantom clown phenomenon uh, eventually died down in 1981, but it would come back. Uh, in 1991, there was a case of a phantom clown that was named after, uh, in living color, Homie the Clown that was haunting neighborhoods. I love neighborhoods. Homie the Clown. Homie don't play that. Yeah. Come on. This is a really fascinating story. So in, uh, in I think, the south side of Chicago... There were reports of a clown driving around in a van that said ha 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 or ho 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 that all the kids nicknamed Homie the Clown after the character on In Living wow. Color. And this is crazy. also around the time that uh, Candyman was in theaters and the idea that there was this like ghost haunting the urban areas of a city. Um, and that might have even been Chicago. I can't remember where Candyman t- took place. But this this was on the news. No one ever caught this Homie the Clown character. It even reached uh, Damon Wayans, who had had heard about this and was like, they're giving a bad name to my character, uh, wow. Homie the Clown. And this went on for like a full year. In 19, there were parents that were called. Schools were sending out alerts and phone trees telling everyone to be careful of Homie the Clown in uh, Chicago. And nothing ever, nothing ever came of it. And then in 2014 and 2016, phantom clowns made a big appearance on YouTube and social media where people were suddenly posting videos of encountering clowns in graveyards, gazebos, in the middle of the road, in the middle of the night, and posting them on YouTube. Riley, you're nodding your head. I remember this this moment in the internet. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of those were debunked as being marketing for a pseudo documentary horror film called Wrinkles the Clown. Yeah. But this That's was where a it started, yeah. Yeah, this was like a big phenomenon again in, in the mid uh, 2010s. So, what do you guys think? Were these phantom clowns not so merry pranksters, but very human? Or were they some type of phantom phenomenon? Margaret Ann? What the hell are phantom clowns? <laughs> did 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 any children actually ever get taken? No. There was Good one question. there yeah. was one <clears throat> rumor that I don't think was ever verified in the Homie the Clown case, I believe, where someone claimed that they saw a little girl being snatched by a clown in a van, but I don't think mm-hmm. it was ever verified. You know, there were, in the 80s it was like you were definitely going to get abducted in a van yeah. in, mm-hmm. down your street, right? Like that was like a thing that people were yeah. worried about. So the fact that there were a clown, I mean, not that you're not worried about it now, but you know what I'm saying? In the 80s, it was like this van was going to drive uh, by and a man was going to offer you coming. candy and take you. Mm-hmm. Um, internet connection. I don't know, the clown. Well, hold it that seems... thought. Okay. We're going to take a quick, we just vanished. Uh, Bryce, Bryce just vanished. Just I Might saw him. He went, my... into, he went into the <laughs> With yeah, a clown. we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to see if Bryce is still alive, and then we're going to continue to unpack this weird phenomenon. <laughs> okay, everybody, Bryce is safe and sound. We were a little <laughs> worried he was going to come back into the room dressed as a clown, oh, but he's not. A clown maker. I thought I saw a no, clown he's, out he's there good. on the street. I had to go check. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. So Margaret Stay Ann, you were, you were saying about you were talking about how in the eighties, like Stranger Danger and all this stuff was like every kid was worried about being picked up in a van. So I'm because yeah. obviously I remember that I grew up, you know, in the eighties. Bryce did as well. Riley, we're not sure how old he is. It could have been the seventeen eighties. It could Don't have been yeah, fifteen eighties. <laughs> um, but. Uh, do you guys think I'm curious and Margaret Ann, let's start with you. Do you think that this mm. could be a case of mass hysteria? Do you think these kids were all making this up? Well, it, it could be because I don't know, but it's so, but back then, all right, again, it's the eighties. Like how would kids know to spread that information to other kids? It's not like people were seeing it on, you know, TikTok and going to look, have somebody look like a clown and make a video of them. Right. Mm. So mm. good point. It had to, have, I would say generated from something organic and maybe then spiraled into 
people thinking they're seeing things they're not seeing, but it had to have started from something genuine, I would say, to spread that much. Yeah. And it's weird that it all happened at the, like the same week, you know, that this all mm-hmm. seemed, it seemed to be happening simultaneously all around the country, at least six major cities. And those yeah. are the, just the ones that are reported. R- Riley Bryce, what do you think about this case? Well, I was going to say, you know, what's really disturbing for me is like all this, uh, you know, these children are all seeing something, but then when the officers or an adult gets there, it's it's not there, it's gone. So it's almost like a phenomenon uh, suited for, for a younger person. And, and it has very much similar patterns to the UFO phenomenon. I mean, you know, here all these kids are seeing something, but no physical evidence is left behind. No one's getting hurt or touched. So it's like, it's like this thing that's sort of terrorizing people, but it's still not in our reality for some reason. You know, it's very strange and I, I don't like it, you know. Uh, we've also, we've also heard, you know, from, from some pretty, uh, credited ufologists, you know, we've even talked about it, you know, what came first about this idea of the clown or the, you know, this mask wearing entity, you know, it's been around for a long, long time. Mm, Yeah. I mean, yeah, at first, at first I thought, you know, you were just telling a story of some scary creeps, but then the fact that no one was ever found and no actual crimes were ever committed. Well, I mean, I guess it would be if it's true that I'm a man and running around without pants and a clown. Yeah, that's definitely a that's crime. Very much a crime. Right. Yeah, I'm or from... harassing children is uh, totally a crime. But you, you get what I'm saying is like there was no, no actual yeah, yeah. Right. confirmed. Uh, so it's like, you know, you do talk about how at the time, like there was this paranoia of um, like child abduction in the van, stranger danger, and the satanic panic and all that. So this could be sort of a manifestation of the collective anxiety of of the time and yep it feels it does so. feel very 80s scary clowns in a van feels very 80s to me well, like clown. Yeah. when i saw that movie killer clowns from outer space what year is that movie yeah that's later I, that that's like that movie messed with me. oh my god that too movie quick yeah i remember that movie yeah when, when was yeah. it too it when? was 86 it didn't come oh, out wow. until night the book wasn't published until 1986 and the tv miniseries wasn't until like 89 or 90 88 uh, for killer clowns from out okay yeah uh, okay so a lot of these in in uh in another uh, uh i think i was listening to another podcast they were talking about how um the scene from poltergeist hadn't even come out yet that was 82 so the clown that right. attacks the kid in his bedroom so obviously there i'm not saying that people didn't think clowns were scary before that all popped up in in mass media but it does seem that the clown stuff doesn't really become like a marker of horror Mm -hmm. in movies and television until the mid eighties, you know, like Mm. Pee Wee's big adventure was 86 and there's like, he has a nightmare about the clown stealing his bike. So it's a, it's a weird thing. So maybe, I mean, maybe there is a sort of like meta thing where like, this was the moment that the collective unconscious of children decided that clowns were scary, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. it all, it kind of mm-hmm. settled in and maybe there was some truth to this. Maybe it got blown out of proportion. Maybe they were just a creeps driving around. But also as I was researching this, I was like, again, difficult because it's before the internet but could there have been like could there have been like an underground network of creeps that were all like got together and called each other and were like okay may 5th is clown monday and we are we're going to start to strike the fear and you know, fear into the hearts of neighborhoods everywhere like like i don't People know i don't know people yeah, i mean, i would I, yeah. I would not rule out that possibility. But you would think one person would get caught doing this. Yeah, I don't stories think this is that. I like your theory, but I think this is a little bit something more than that. I, I liked your previous theory about the anxieties of of children sort of manifesting as this apparition, uh, whether it's a clown or a, or a van driving by, and then you know you know it's launched into some altered state of consciousness where they're perceiving these. Fucked up clowns, man. I do not like it. Uh, but uh, yeah, man, it's pretty uh, fascinating stuff, man. Wild clowns. Yeah. Hmm. What, what what is it that's so? Because I, I, I don't. I'm not afraid. I don't of like clowns. a clown. I don't like a clown. Margaret Ann, you're not right scared of clowns. No. Yeah, I'm not really scared of clowns either. Yeah, no. No. I find them very off putting and unsettling. 
Mm. I don't know. People hate them. I like them. I don't well, know. Let me ask you this. Do you think clowns are uh, Maybe funny? not after this movie. Do I think they're funny? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> See? Good I don't know. Question. It depends where they right. are. Yeah, you're right. Totally. I think I think because they have the like exaggerated features, mm, they the sort uncanny of valley seem they, yeah they walk the yeah they have an uncanny valley effect, and they walk a line between dream and reality in the way that they're presented. They're exaggerated. It's a carnival clothing. character. But, yeah, it's a carnival. Yeah. And for me as a kid, it's like you can't really trust a clown. Mm. You know what I mean? No. Mm-hmm. And I guess I have to go back and say there was one, at least one big clown figure in pop culture that was a bad guy, which was the Joker, who had been around since uh, the 40s and was, or, yeah, the 40s and was based on a movie called The Man Who Laughed about a killer clown. So they were, it was out there, but like Joker doesn't have a big red nose. He's not dressed like Bozo the Clown. Um, it's just, this seems to be part of our collective folklore in America, this idea that like there are killer clowns out there or there are these phantom you know, clowns or they're creepy. You know, it'll be like, interesting. To and see and obviously John Wayne Gacy, that's another big thing. Yeah, there's that. A serial yeah. killer who was from Chicago and that was all happening near this period and was a birthday clown who was a killer. So that this could all be coming out of that stuff as well. That makes sense. Well, in order for this to be a true, genuine phenomenon, it would have to return, as these phenomenon often do. So I wonder if we'll see more of these sort of uh, apparitional clown sightings throughout the uh, throughout the globe. Yeah. Oh, who knows? Margaret Ann, thank you so much for being here and sharing your thoughts, your unorthodox thoughts on clowns. Uh, <laughs> When can no clown, okay? Let, <laughs> let people know. Let people know where they can find you should you choose to be found. And uh tell us when we're gonna be able to uh watch you face off against a clown in a movie. You're gonna see I might my opinion of clowns might really change in <laughs> yeah, so, your final cut. <laughs> few weeks here. Yes, but um you can find me at Margaret Ann Florence on Instagram and also on my website www.margaretann with an e florence.com awesome. awesome thank you so much for being here we appreciate it yeah. can't wait Woo. to see the movie we're so yeah. sad thank you guys so much thanks for having me this was so fun and creepy <laughs> <laughs> good hopefully not clown in a van kind of creepy no. okay before we head over to this week's collector's corner let's thank some club scouts who have recently joined us over on bcc the other side it's time for some Patreon shout-outs. Yes! Chisato. Thank you, Chisato. Aaron Oman, Cosmeteer. Thank you, Aaron. Welcome. Sonia Ladarden. Sonia, we appreciate you. Welcome back, Sonia. Tracy Morgan, Cosmeteer. Tracy Morgan, welcome. I know. I hope it's the Tracy Morgan. Well, either uh, way, it is the Tracy Morgan. You know? It's our You're Tracy Morgan. You're our Tracy, Tracy Morgan. That's Morgan. right. Yes. Welcome. Whoever you are. <laughs> Join our Tracy Morgan and all your other new friends over at patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club, where you can unlock total access to BC. What? With three bonus episodes every month, access to the entire exclusive episode archives instantly, the BCC Discord. Uh, you can upgrade to the Cosmeteer membership to unlock three music tracks from super producer Riley every month. Get all that music in the back catalog and ad free episodes like the one you're so listening to stuff. right now. Plus, some exclusive video content coming your way very soon. What? So, guys, it's a really good time to come check it Do out. It. Do it. Packed. Do it, baby. Okay, let's swing by the collector's corner. Um, I am, I don't think I've talked about it on the show. I've been on a major slow horses kick. I discovered the show, Ooh. Apple TV show, Gary Oldman. Uh, oh. It's about uh, it's about reject MI5 spies in London. And what? they're basically a group of spies that like when you get in trouble or you mess up, they put you in this one department where you're basically um, made to file paperwork. Peeling and it's potatoes. Overseas. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Peeling potatoes. But then, of course, fun stuff happens. It's very funny. 
Gary Oldman is so good in it. The entire cast is so good. I I finally watched it when I had COVID this past summer, and, uh, and then I got Kate to watch it last weekend, and we're like, I rewatched the first three seasons, which are only six episodes apiece, and season four is like airing now, uh, probably wrapping up by the time that people listen to this. So I love the show. It's maybe my new favorite show. Nothing to do with the paranormal. Highly recommend. I mean, they do call things spooks, but it's a different kind of spook. Um, so I highly recommend that. Cool. cool. That's my collector's corner for the for the week. Man. Uh, Bryce, what do you got? Well, as uh, as our lovely guest, Mark Rodan said, we are in the movie Terrifier 3 coming out October 11th. So be sure to check that out on theaters if you can stomach it. And uh, also on Discovery, Expedition Bigfoot going strong. Check out the new season. Should be hitting so all the good. streamers. So good. So fun. Thanks. It's I so, love I'm, it. I'm loving it too, man. It's such a blast. Let's, let's take a quick moment to talk about this. There, There's a really great scene where you're like in a tent with 50 cameras oh, and you're blocked yeah. Your block. The, the, what was the what was the fabric on the tent? What oh, it's the, a, it, like, it's electromagnetic fabric, so it blocks the electromagnetic frequencies from all the uh, from all the equipment. So it's a uh, it's an EMF blocking signal. It's a, we can't actually say the name of the corporate the brand that it, it. that it is because it's a license, but it's uh, so it's an EMF blocking tent, you know. And this is based on the theory that like Bigfoot might be able to detect all this electronic equipment buzzing around them. Well, that's so. right. Yeah, so many people put out trail cameras, but yet hardly ever capture anything. And and you know, there's actually been some t- scientific papers done uh, with new uh, things introduced in in environments, especially like gorilla cages and primate uh, exposures, where they'll like put a camera in, and they and you know you'd think they all go up to it, but they actually all stay away from it until they like. Uh, habituate to it so uh you know we wanted to just test this theory that perhaps they're sensing some of these uh hot electric signals coming off and uh and maybe we I can mean, it's stealth worth or camouflage it. that it's worth it for the scene alone where like you are alone in this thing you have multiple cameras going and something's running around the tent and it Dude. every time you turn it runs across <laughs> the screen over your shoulder it's one of the best scenes it's i texted you i was like this is so funny in all the best ways like it was exciting it was thrilling but it was also very that. funny to think of you being like what was that what was happening yeah. what's that over oh there oh my god you know those totally my, a scene out of a horror movie those usually are my ideas when i'm just like i want to put up every camera we have Pointing in every direction. <laughs> That's so, so I was like, let you know, uh, I love that stuff. You know, it's like, let's go. Weird, baby. creepy tree peeker uh, that you got on your backpack cam, too. That was, yes, yes. I have thermal. a screenshot of that thing. It's so creepy. So, uh, yeah, a lot like of fun that, that, that show. And yeah, uh, it's great. And we'll eventually do, we're going to, we're going to wait until it's up on HBO Max where people can watch it if they don't have Discovery Channel, but we will eventually get to like a full on discussion about this season of Expedition Love Bigfoot. We'll probably we'll on down. the other side, but we're kind of waiting until everyone has a chance to you know, more people have a chance to watch it. Um Riley, sorry, we we got just we got uh, oh, sidetracked I'm there. I'm excited about all of these things. Oh, that so sounds fun. great. So fun. This season is probably my favorite season so far, Bryce, I have to say. And I it's haven't really like I gotten a chance to really dig in on it and I I am looking forward to a, a binge oh, of Expedition it's Bigfoot. It's a blast. And it's almost better to binge in some ways because I really want the next episode as soon as it's over and I'm angry that I have to wait a week. Um, but that shouldn't stop you from watching it right now. Uh, Riley, what do you got? Oh, you know, the usual stuff. Tommy's got music out. If you haven't listened to that, check it out. We did that EP, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. It's got these like bratty punk songs, uh, especially listen to Staring at My Phone. I, I'm like very, I love that song. I'm, I'm very, very pleased with that one. Um Pom Poms has a new music video that I think just came out when this drops. And uh, it's like a no budget thing that we made that is honestly so fun and funny. We made like the shittiest green screen and uh, did a bunch of fun sets. And the whole thing was to try to make it feel like uh, like the movies you make like when you're a kid. Um, oh, nice. It's really fun. It's a blast. Also, that whole album came out pretty recently. If you haven't listened to that, give that a listen. It's very fun, like garagey kind of. Uh, rock and roll that was a good time uh and then uh yeah lots of stuff cooking i've been painting more lately oh cool. very excited about that what yeah. are you inspired by uh landscape uh phenomena or 
Michael and I. Animal carcasses. <laughs> oh, yeah. animal, dead animals, Bryce. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is really uh, good stuff, Riley. Oh, cool. <laughs> I've been, actually, I've been Bryce. doing these like I've been doing these still lives where I'll like, like I I have my own little pet AI engine and I'll I'll, I'll train it to produce a still life but break it like give it a prompt that it doesn't work and then then i'll print that out and it becomes underpainting and then i paint like a still life over it uh oh, cool. so you know like conversation with the machine i don't know it's it's fun it's just i love a, it it's another love it. outgrowth of that little side of things so yeah, yeah that's what i've been up to Awesome. Love it. I want to remind everybody, if you've made it this far into the episode, uh, w- you can watch this over at our YouTube channel, which is growing. Uh, we don't talk about this enough. We should probably talk about it more. Uh, I've been making little exclusive short videos that are over there that you can't find anywhere else. Um, we're planning on dropping more and more things over there. So come, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check it out. Go check out our shorts. Go through our playlists. Um, we're just having... Uh, a lot of fun with it and we're excited mm-hmm. to grow our presence over there nothing will change between you and us over here little podcast That's we love job. our podcast this is going to stay the same but we're going to kind of expand bcc into the youtube so please come check us out if you haven't done so already um and also if you have a spooky story that has happened to you write to us at bigfoot collectors club at gmail.com we're gonna want those spooky stories for the end of this month send us your scariest stories police uh if you would and we'll we'll get them on a future episode all right i think that's it for me um if you don't see us over at the other on the other side, we'll see you back here next week with an all new episode of BCC and a whole new tale from Zombie Bigfoot's Crypt to Crypt. Until then, good night <laughs> and go get regressed. Hock, hock. <laughs> That's the kind of clown you'd be. You'd be like kind of the the scary hobo clown kind of yeah. vibe. I feel like I'd be like the silent one. You would be. You'd be like Hearing. hanging from yeah. a tree. I would be your traditional. Ho, 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 ho. Yeah. <laughs> Bigfoot Collectors Club is executive produced by Michael McMillan, Riley Bray, and Bryce Johnson. Our show is engineered, produced, and scored by Riley Bray. Our theme song, Come Alone, is by Sun Eaters. Follow them on Spotify. Want more BCC? For exclusive full-length episodes every month and total access to the other side, check out patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club.